Hello and welcome to our lesson on percentages of amounts. This is our next video in our series of functional skills maths lessons at levels one and two. The learning outcome for this lesson is to calculate percentage of amounts and express one value as a percentage of another. The linked learning for this goes back to working out fractions of amounts. As you're aware, a percentage of an amount is a denominator of 100. Well, in an earlier lesson, we learned how to do fractions of amounts. So a quarter of 80 meant a quarter times 80. And we showed you a technique to make this calculation easier. Percentage of amounts are very similar. A percentage of 20% means 20 over 100. So essentially, we're talking about fractions of amounts. So 20% of 1,200 people, well, if we used our technique that we used with fractions, we could do this. And when we divide 1,200 by 100, 10, 100, we move the decimal place. So it becomes 20 times 12, which is 240. So using that understanding of dividing by 10 and 100, there's actually something called the 10% rule. And this is where you divide whatever it is you're trying to find the percentage of by 10, and that gives you 10%, and then increase the number of 10% that you're after. So for example, if we were looking for 30% of 70, then I know to get 10% of 70, I divide it by 10. So 10% is 7. So to get 30%, I've multiplied it by 3. So 30% of 70 is 21. So we find out what 10% is first, and then from there we can work on 20%, 30%, or even halve it to get 5%, and so on. This 10% rule is really powerful because you can then go on to calculate 5% of something by halving whatever the 10% is or 1% of an amount by dividing it by 100. So let's look at two examples before we give you some to practice with. So to find out 15% of 80, my starting point would be to find my 10% amount. So to find 10%, divide it by 10, and that's 8. To get 5% then, so I've halved it to get from 10 to 5, I halve this value and I get 4. So I know 10% is 8, then 5% is 4, so if we add the 8 and the 4, we know that 15% is 12. So 15% of 80 is 12. Let's try another slightly tricky one. 21% of 1,200. Well, I know 10% is 120. So 20% 20 must be 240. I don't want 20%, I want 21%. So to find 1% of something, divide it by 100 and you get 12. So to get my 21%, I need to combine my 20% with my 1%. So 21% is 252. Have a go at these three and see how you get on. So 70% of 80. Well, if we use our 10% rule, I know 10% of 80 is 8. I've divided it by 10. To get 70%, I need to multiply the 8 by 7, which is 56. So 70% of 80 is 56. Now let's do the same for 45% of 260. 10% 10 is 26. I divide by 10. So 40% 
must multiply this by 4. So 26 times 4 is 104. And then finally, I know what 10% is, so I can work out my 5%, which is half of the 26, which is 13. So to get my 45%, I need to combine the 40 with the 5. So 104 plus 13 gives us 117. So 45% of 260 is 117. And finally, 23% of 2,100. So our 10% rule says divide this by 10 to give us 210. 20% means I'm doubling this amount to 420. I need to work out what 1% is, so that's dividing it by 100 to give me 21. I don't want 1%, I want 3%. So multiply this by 3 and you get 63. To get our 23%, we need to combine our 20% with our 3%. So 420 plus our 63 gives us 483. So 23% of 2100 is 483. The other way you could possibly want to do these calculations is to convert a percentage into a decimal and then do the maths. We generally recommend the 10% rule for the non-calculator method, but when you have a calculator, you might see that 12% is actually the decimal 0.12, and then you can multiply it by 26. It's easy to do on a calculator, but the 10% rule is easy without a calculator. If you want to do the maths, so 12% of 26 is 3.12. So here are two questions for you. What is 65% of 120 and the second question is 84 percent of 450 dogs asked preferred pedigree chum how many dogs prefer pedigree chum okay let's look at the first one so 65 percent of 120 using our 10 percent rule we know 10 percent is 12. 60 percent therefore we've multiplied by 6 gives us 72. we also know that 5% must be 6. So to get our 65%, we need to add the 72 and our 6 together to give us 78. So what is 65% of 120? It is 78. So now we have to work out how many dogs prefer pedigree chum. So our 10% rule tells us that 10% is 45. We don't want 10%, we want 80%, so we need to multiply by 8. Let's look at multiplying 45 by 8 in a different method. Well, if I know that 2 45s is 90, then 4 45s must be 180. So 8 45s must be, double that, 360. If we know that 10% is 45, then if we divide 450 by 100, 1% must be 4.5. We don't want 1%, we want 4%. So in the same vein, if 1% is 4.5, 2% must be 9, and 4% must be 18. To get our 84%, we need to add our 360 and our 18 to get 378. 
So how many dogs preferred uh, pedigree chum? 378 dogs preferred pedigree chum. There is a trick that some of you may want to use when doing percentage calculations, and that is when you have the percentage of something, it's equivalent to the something percentage of whatever X is. So for example, if you're trying to work out 8% of 50, it's the same as 50% of 8. So you can swap these two around. And 50% of 8 is 4, because we know 50% is halving something. So sometimes it's easier to see if it's worth switching, because if this is a nice round number, like a 50 or a 25, then it's easy to do uh, with respect to maths and fractions. Okay, here's a worksheet with lots of examples for you to have a go at. So the ones on the left are more straightforward, then the middle column are slightly more difficult, and then the column on the right are the harder ones. Have a go, see how you get on. Right, now let's look at the solutions. For the first one, we can see we have a nice easy percentage. So you might not want to use the 10% rule or turning it into a fraction. We can actually say that I understand 50% is a half, so a half of 50 is 25. Here are the quick answers for the rest of this worksheet. So all of the answers are underlined in red with the working out that I used uh, alongside them. Just going to spend a few moments looking at percentage increases and decreases of amounts because it relates to working out the percentage of something and then either adding it to the original amount or subtracting it from the original amount. So if something increases or decreases by a percentage, we work out the percentage of that amount and then either add it to increase or subtract to decrease. We've already learned how to calculate the percentage of an amount. All we're going to do now is either add it or take it away from the original amount. So here are two examples. If I'm going to increase 40 by 25%, then the first thing I need to do is work out the 25% of 40. So I know 10% is 4, and 20% is therefore 8. The 5% gives me 2, so 25% is 10. You could have done this quickly and easily by recognising 25% is a quarter of 40, and a quarter of 40 is 10. But either way, that's the way you would do it, to work out the percentage amount. Now, it's asking us to increase the original amount of 40. So, because it's an increase, the percentage amount needs to be added to the original amount. So, don't forget to add the 40 to get 50. So, to increase 40 by 25%, we end up with 50. Let's do the same with this one, where we need to decrease 80 by 75%. Again, you could recognise 75% as the fraction 3 quarters. So we could have 3 quarters of 80. Remember how we tackled our fractions of an amount? 
So it becomes 3 times 20, which is 60. Now, we have to decrease 80 by 75%. So the 60 is only the 75% amount. We haven't decreased it yet. So you've got your original amount. Take away the 75% we've just worked out, and we end up with 20. So decreasing 80 by 75% gives us 20. A common error that we come across, it's called a misconception, is where people are increasing the value by the percentage. So they're doing 40 plus 25, which is 65, and that doesn't work. You have to work out the percentage amount first, and then either add it to increase or subtract it to decrease the original amount. Have a go at these and see how you get on. OK, so if we want to increase £200 by 10%, the 10% rule tells us that the value is 20. So 10% of £200 is 20. We need to increase it. So our £200, we increase to get 220 Now let's go through the working out for the rest of the questions on the increasing £200 by various percentages. So the answers are a 10% increase is 220, 20% 20 increase is 240, 60% is 320, 15% is 230, and then finally 35% takes us up to 270. Now let's do the calculations for the percentage decreases of £400 by these amounts. So our 10% amount is going to be £40. So to decrease 400 by £40 or 10% gives us £360. Now let's go through the rest of the calculations for decreasing £400 by various percentages. So the answers for this section are £360, £80, £40, £380 and £220. Let's look at some questions from functional skills where we have to do percentage increases and decreases, but using the wordy type questions. McDonald's reduced the price of their food by 20% in a sales promotion. A double burger usually costs £1.50. How much will it cost in the sales promotion? If I know that the 10% amount of £1.50 is 15 pence then a 20% reduction means I need to take off 30p so if I have one pound 50 and I take off 30 pence then the promotion price is one pound 20 the next question a girl puts £200 into a savings account that has an interest rate of 5%. She leaves the money in the account. How much will she have in the account at the end of the year? So we've got £200 and if we have the 10% rate, then it would be £20. So that gives us 5% value of 10. So she'll have £10 interest at the end of the year. Because it's a savings account, we're going to add the £10 to the £200 she put in initially. So she will have £210 at the end of the year.
You can also do percentage increases and decreases using decimals. And I know some of you uh, might want to do this as your preferred method, especially with a calculator. In order to do this, you need to understand that your original amount has the value of one. So it's one of something. So if you're going to increase something by 20%, you need to understand that 20% is the decimal 0.2. So to get an increase of an amount of 20%, so if you're going to increase something by 20%, you have your original amount of 100%, and then you need to add 20%, so you end up with 120%. Now, 120%, if you divide it by 100 and turn it into a decimal, is 1.2 of the amount. Similarly, to reduce an amount by 20% using the decimal method, the original amount is 100%, and to take away 20% would leave you with 80%, or the decimal 0 0.8 of the amount. So, instead of multiplying the amount by a percentage, you're now multiplying by decimals, which is why we did the lesson previously, so that you understood the relationship between a percentage and a decimal. Let's look at these two problems, but using our decimals instead of our percentages. So if I want to increase 80 by 20%, to increase something by 20% means I've got 1 for the original amount and 0.2 for the 20%. So it's going to increase something. So when something is above 1, it's going to increase it. Below 1, it's going to decrease it. So now I'm left with 80 times 1.2. We can do this because we've done multiplying decimals. We move the decimal point one place to the right and it becomes. 80 times 12. Don't forget to move the decimal point back one. So you have increasing 80 by 20% gives you 96. Let's look at decreasing 80 by 20%. So if I know 100% of something is 1, I need to take away 0 0.2. So that leaves me 0 0.8. So to decrease 80 by 20%, it's 80 multiplied by 0 0.8. Again, I know how to multiply decimals, move the decimal point, and then do the maths. Don't forget to put the decimal point back one place and you end up with 64. So decreasing 80 by 20% gives you 64 using the decimal method. Have a go at increasing and decreasing 600 and 800 pounds using the decimal method. And I'll show you the answers really quickly. Now, in order to do the decreasing of the amount, we have to subtract the percentage away from 1. So we're going to decrease 800 by 20%. So it's 1 minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.8. So it becomes 0 0.8 times 800. Here's an exam style question for you. Circle the calculation that increases 260 pounds by 17%. Well, we know that if we multiply it by one, we get the same amount, and we understand that 
is 0.17. So it has to be the original amount times 1.17. That's what we've just been doing in the original question. So to increase something by 17%, 260 times 1.17 would get you the marks. Now let's look at the second part of our learning outcome as part of this lesson, which is one number as a percentage of another. And already we can link it to learning we did on fractions, where we created a fraction from two values. So if we said 4 out of 5 students will pass the exam, then our fraction of the amount would have been 4 over 5. All we need to do in this part of the lesson is turn the fraction into a percentage. And this can be done in a couple of easy ways. The first way could be to multiply this by 100. Now, we already know how to multiply an amount by a fraction. We don't do this first, we do this. So 100 divided by 5 is 20. So 4 times 20 equals 80%. The other way to do this, if we had 4 over 5, is equivalence. Because we know a percentage is something over 100, then how did I get from 5 to 100? I multiplied it by 20. I do the same again with my numerator, and I get 80 over 100. So there are a couple of ways to turn two values into a percentage. Let's concentrate on the manual way of doing this and what you'll find is in your section A of your exam the denominator always relates to 100 quite nicely. So for this example 16 out of 20 students will pass the exam. Have a go and work out the percentage yourselves, not forgetting to pause the video if you need more time. So how would we go about this? Well we have 16 out of 20 students passing the exam. But to turn it into a percentage, we need a denominator of 100. So how do I get from 20 to 100? I multiply it by 5. I do the same again with the 16. So if you can't remember how to do it manually, then you can use your box method. So it's 80. So 16 out of 20 students will pass the exam. This is the same as 80%. If you were doing this in section B and you had your calculator, you can use the fraction button on your calculator. Just multiply your fraction by 100 and it will give you the 80 that you need for your percentage. And we'll get some calculator practice in the next lesson. So this is the calculator method where one number as a percentage of another is given by the first number divided by the second number times 100. And this is excellent for the calculator system. If you get it in section A, then don't forget there's also the manual method. So here in a car park of 200 cars, 140 were made in Europe. The rest were made in Japan. Approximately what percentage of the cars were made in Europe? So the European cars is 140 over 200. And because I'm going to do this in the manual method, I would simply put my denominator as 100. So how did I get from 200 to 100? I divided it by 2. I do the same to the numerator, and I end up with 70 over 100, which we recognize as 70%. If you were doing it on your calculator, which is what this little formula here gives you, it's your first number divided by your second number times 100. And you could stick it in your calculator to get 70, which you would turn into your percentage. Here's another section one question for you to have a go at. I score 18 out of 25 in the level 2 maths exam. What percentage have I scored? Well, I know because I'm talking about percentages, I need it to be a denominator of 100. How did I get from 25 to 100? I multiplied it by 4. 
multiply the numerator by 4. Now this time, if you can't do it in one go, you can break it down using chunking. And I know that two 18s are 36. Therefore, four 18s must be two lots of 36, which is 72. So it's 72 over 100, which we recognize now as 72%. If you're putting into your calculator, you'd simply put this into the calculator and press equals to get 72, which you would turn into the percentage. And that completes our learning outcome for this lesson, where we've learned how to calculate percentage of amounts and express one value as a percentage of another using both manual and calculator methods. So here are the buzzwords for this lesson. And in this lesson, we learn how to calculate a percentage of an amount. So in order to do a percentage increase, you add it to the original amount. When we do a percentage decrease, we work out the percentage amount and then subtract it from the original amount. If you would like more practice on any of the topics we've covered during this lesson, please go to Moodle or get some more worksheets from your tutor.